I look at generative technologies, uh, the the adoption rates, which are which are quite a measure that most organizations use for seeing how technology is adopted, right? Uh, if you look at it, uh, you know, Google took 78 months uh, to actually hit 100 million users. Uh, Uber took about 70 months, despite it being something that a lot of people said, we love the way it solves the problem, right? Uh, Instagram took about 30, TikTok took about nine months to hit 100 million users, whereas ChatGPT hit 100 million users in two months flat, right? And that, uh, in a lot of ways, is definitive of how people are utilizing and leveraging off the power of what generative technology does. It really, in all senses of the word, democratizes technology and really, you know, we like to call it lowering the, it, it, it lowers the floor, and it also gives you the ability to raise the ceiling, right? Because what, what generative technology is doing for us is that it's making access so much, so much simpler, and the adoption rates are very indicative of that, right? Um, we think in, in and, and this, this is actually a, a, a survey done by McKinsey and company, uh, which believes that there is a potential of 200 to 340 billion dollars of additive revenue that is possible in the BFSI sector just because of generative AI, right? And that's a massive, massive um, impact on the, on the vertical itself, right? And if you think about it a little more objectively, right, a lot of it is really driven by productivity gains. Uh, and, and, and McKinsey has pegged the productivity gains at a couple of percentage points, and they think that that's going to be a massive driver. But the other big thing that, that there is common consensus and belief is how generative AI can help us get to acquire customers much quicker, which means can I make my campaign to cash a much shorter cycle, right? And that's something that generative AI has the power to deliver. And the other big thing that, that generative AI can help us do is really be able to impact customer service such that our interactions with our customers, whether it's about a prospect or it's about an existing customer and how do you serve that customer, can be really done in the best possible manner without the customer and, and really heightening the customer experience all up, right? Uh, and, and these three levers in itself have, has, the, has the potential to actually impact your top line and bottom line uh, as an industry on the whole between 200 to 340 billion, right? Which I think is just stupendous. And I, you know, we believe that there is huge amounts of opportunity. And I think it's, it's really something that uh, we'd encourage organizations to think about very objectively. And, and what, what I'll do over the course of the next few minutes is talk about how Adobe thinks about it and how we viewing the struggles that people seem to have when they are trying to adopt uh, generative technologies, right? Uh, and, and we spoke a little, about, little bit from an acquisition standpoint, right? One of the things that, that most marketeers want to have is they want to maintain control, right? And with generative technologies, there is this sense that a lot of the control is actually sitting with the machine, right? But the fact is that, you know, if you, if you deploy that ride with a very thought through way that you want to actually make it come to life, it actually has the power to to really supercharge and, and make your go-to-market much, much quicker, right? So, so, so the slower time to operationalize is because of, you know, us trying to get too many controls. How do you make this happen? How do you ensure that it's following brand guidelines? How do you ensure that, uh, you know, you're, you're aligned with the regulatory framework that you need to comply with, right? I mean, you know, um, and all of that, and, and when you start to put that into your generative technology marketing framework, it starts to look like a lot more complex, right? Uh, the other one is with regard to, uh, you know, the fact that BFSIs are really focused on solving for financial issues for, for customers, right? Um, data science resources are, are there, uh, and, 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 but, but they're still... Uh, few and far in between, right? And so, so how do I build uh, a service that can actually help my employees 
or my customers derive better value from the products that I have, right? And that seems to be one another big struggle. Uh, and the last one is with how does AI generated content uh, information uh, come in good from a privacy and trust standard, right? Uh, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, you know, when, when ChatGPT got all the fanfare and the attention, one of the things that, that really came to the fore was that there was a lot of uh, unverified information that was being thrown up by ChatGPT, right? And the fact is that all of it was being derived out of uh, the trawling that was happening on the internet and then, then ChatGPT was making sense of it and, and throwing it back at us, right? But that in the BFSI space is something that is just not acceptable, right? And we understand that and we've, we've heard organizations tell us that we cannot have issues where customers' privacy is, is, is impacted or that wrong information is extended out to, to, uh, to organizations, right? And, and of course, this also leads to the next big point, which is around copyright, right? So, so you have to ensure that whatever Gen AI you use is also centric to copyrights and, and is within the framework of uh, not violating anybody's IP, right? So, so these seem like the common struggles, and I'm happy to hear, uh, you know, either at the end of the session or subsequently, if you, if you think that there are some other struggles that you've had with Gen, Gen AI and Gen Technologies, and if there is any way that we could help address that. So what is Adobe really trying to do, right? Um, so, so we believe that, you know, generative technologies have the capabilities that can reshape marketing completely, right? From planning to creation to execution, right? Uh, and we are betting big on this. Um, a year back, we launched our service called Firefly, uh, which, which was our version of generative uh, technologies. And in the last one year, we had 9 billion, 9 billion images that have been generated using Firefly. That's been the impact of generative technologies from the Adobe suite from a marketing standpoint, right? 9 billion in 12 months. Right? I think, I think that's, a, that's a massive, massive thumbs up to, the, to what generative AI can deliver. And most organizations are, are jumping on the bandwagon to try and get the maximum value out of it. Right? The other thing that we've seen is, uh, you know, a lot of organizations are building a lot of LLMs. Right? And, and, and interestingly, there are a lot of these LLMs that are being built around documents. Right? And, and when we looked at the document-based LLM, we realized that a lot of organizations have lots of documents, but none of those documents have the ability for you to actually be able to get intelligence out of it. So how do you build an LLM when your document set that you've created doesn't allow for the engine to actually pull out intelligence, right? And that's when most organizations are coming to us and saying, you know, if I want to make my document come to life, and for us to actually be able to harness the intelligence that's sitting in the documents, is there a way that you can help us, right? And PDF, which is the Acrobat PDF, is one of the ways in, a, in which a lot of organizations are actually taking these documents and making them alive again and getting intelligence out of it, right? And so we're working with a lot of organizations to help them create their own LLM such that they're able to make better decision making, uh, deliver better customer service, uh, or be able to help in creating better customer journeys all up, right? So, so, there's, so, so these two core things are, are areas where, you know, if you're looking at ways and means in which you want to solve for these problems, you should definitely talk with us because we're doing this for a lot of customers and, and people are seeing a lot of value, right? Uh, the other thing that, that we've done uh, at Adobe is that, you know, we've got another range of products which we call as the digital experience products, uh, in which what we've done is we've built in Adobe Sensei. Sensei was our, our, our first version of artificial intelligence. We built that into the, into the entire suite of products. And now what we've done is we've supercharged it by adding the generative technology capability on it, right? So, so that's now completely built in in such a manner that your organization right from planning uh, to creating 
to executing uh, using generative technologies and then delivering the most outstanding customer service is possible using Adobe technologies, right? So that's been, that's our vision. Um, if I look at it purely from a, from a product set standpoint, this is just to give you a frame of reference about how to think about what Adobe's product set is leveraging and how it's leveraging uh, generative AI, right? So it's natively integrated. So we've natively integrated generative technologies into all our products, right? Uh, we've got AI as a service. So what we've started doing now is that we're saying, uh, you know, you don't need to need to have our product set to be able to uh, to, uh, to to leverage off what generative AI can do for you. You can leverage off APIs, and we've made APIs available for you as a service across both Firefly, Creative Cloud, and Document Cloud, which is Acrobat, right? Um, we've got, we've, we've now also added another layer, uh, especially in Acrobat, which is what we call as an AI assistant, uh, which helps you go through large documents and be able to derive quick value out of it, right? And uh, let me share an example of, um, uh, of, a, of, of the legal department of one of the banks. And what they are doing is that they're, they're, they're reviewing all the contracts by using AI assistant to be able to quickly assess and talk to the document and get the reference from the document, right? So what that is doing is it's really cutting down on time that it takes for you to actually turn around documents both from either a review standpoint or from, uh, you know, uh, putting out a new contract out for, for you to sign, right? Um, and of course, there is uh, the Adobe Firefly story, right? Which, again, is something that, you know, like I said, 9 billion uh, images. But, but interestingly, we're working with a bunch of banks and, and fintechs where uh, the problem that they, they're trying to solve for is that they want to get their uh, time to get the campaigns out, crunch it. Right? So today, typically, most of the banks and, uh, and fintechs that we are speaking to, they say anywhere between 8 to 12 weeks is what it takes for us to get a campaign right from uh, you know, uh, designing it, uh, ensuring that we've got the right set of cohorts, uh, we're doing the A-B testing, and then rolling it out. Right? Uh, and, and, and they're working with us such that we're able to help them be able to get the creative uh, communication and do a quicker A-B testing such that you're able to launch that campaign out within a four-week window, right? So it actually helps, it's helping organizations reduce their campaign to cash timeline from 12 weeks to probably four to five weeks, right? And that's a significant impact, not just on your top line, but also on your bottom line, right? Because you're cutting down cost in terms of what it takes to, to get a campaign out and also you know, you get the campaign in front of the customer much quicker, thereby giving you the ability to start monetizing it much, much earlier. Now, um, the, the four things that we do with Firefly, right, uh, uh, and why, why, why banks are, are comfortable in having these conversations with us, right, is that we are built to be commercially safe. And, and I want to spend a moment talk to you about what we mean when we say commercially safe, right? Uh, so if you, if you think about it, uh, and I gave you some examples with regard to, you know, some of the content that comes out, right? Uh, a lot of times, uh, the content that comes out through any generative technology is unverified. And we think that the, that the technology is building this out, right? But actually, the technology is getting trained on some image that's either open source or it's somebody's proprietary image, but the, but the, but the uh, engine's training on it, right? Now, this actually puts your business at risk because it, it, it makes you liable, if, some, if you are somebody who's using that generative output, to, to actually be, uh, to, 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 to have somebody uh, take a, a legal position against you, right? So what, what did we do? So we, at Adobe, we said, our approach will be that, you know, we are, we are the largest provider of stock images in the world, right? We've got 300 million plus high resolution, high value images. So we said our generative framework will be trained only on these licensed images that we have, right? And these licensed images are either contributed by people who've, who've taken or created these images, 
And what we have also done is that we, we also pay them a royalty for it, or it's royalty free, which means that the image ha doesn't need a license, right? Thereby creating this ability for us to indemnify you. So Adobe is the first and only company which is saying, if you use our generative technologies, we will indemnify you, right? Which means that any image that you build using our generative technologies is underwritten by Adobe, right? So, so that's, and, 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 and that's how much we believe that the model that we built is robust, such that it can offer tremendous value to all of you, right? Um, we've got integrated workflows in Firefly, which are available both as APIs and as, as you know, just your ability to integrate it across multiple different things. The bank that I was talking about, uh, what they're doing is that they're using another, uh, a, uh, another AI-based engine to generate text. They're using Firefly to generate images, and then they're using Firefly uh, Arrange API to integrate the outputs and put the campaign out, right? So, so uh, again, those workflows are built in by default in our, in our engine. Um, it's a, it's a co-pilot for design and delivery. We think uh, generative AI can be a great on-ramp for you to start ideating, right? So, so when, you, when you're tossing with saying, you know, I want to do an A-B test for this cohort of customers, how do you do that really quickly? And generative AI allows for you to actually be able to do, do that, and Firefly allows you to be able to do that. And the last thing is, can I make this available on-brand? Right now, because the challenge with most generative technologies is it comes to you in the way, shape, and form that the, that, that the machine outputs, creates the output, right? But what we've done is we've built a custom model framework around Firefly, which enables for you to actually put in your brand framework, train the model. And this is a model that will be specifically used for you and only for you, and it will follow your brand, brand guidelines, right? Such that you don't have an issue with the generative output not being according to the brand guidelines, right? And so, so that's another big, big plus that we've, that we've got with, uh, with our generative technologies, right? Um, just, and, and I know time's up, but let me just quickly wrap up with three things that we believe are the, the core pillars for our generative technology uh, ethics or framework, if you may. Uh, one is accountability. So, so like I said, you know, we indemnify your organization. That's how much we believe that we are accountable for the output, right? So for us, that is really front and center. And we've said our generative technologies should, and should make us accountable to the output, right? It's got to be responsible, which means that, you know, we are responsible to not just serve you well, but also the creators who are actually creating all of this, right? So for that, we also started this initiative globally in 2018 called the Content Authenticity Initiative. And the idea really is to be able to identify who the creator is and be able to reward the creator for the work that they've done, right? Because the problem with, with or the challenge with, uh, with anything that goes through the whole generative technology standpoint is that you don't know where the source is, right? And so the Content Authenticity Initiative is really trying to be able for us to, to be able to create provenance and ensure that the creator continues to get rewarded for the work that they've done. And the last thing is transparency, right? So we are completely committed to ensuring that our entire AI output is transparent and is something that we will, we will completely uh, you know, share the source to the output end to end with you, right? So, so that's, that's really how we're thinking about ethics from an AI standpoint. And all of you who are embarking on this journey of integrating generative technologies into your organization, we'd encourage you to think about the AI framework, think about which organization actually can help you make this journey and which one should be the best partner for you to actually go down this route. I hope you found the session useful. We are around, me and my team's here, and if there's any, anything that you'd like for us to talk to you about specifically, we'd be happy to. Thank you once again, and have a good rest of the event.